What's going on guys? Welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, we finally start working on the JDM Red Evo 8. I am going to cover how to change your transfer case seal that goes to the axle. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy. So before we continue with this project today, finally I received the first batch of OEM parts. There's a lot of parts I received that you guys will see in later videos, but at least now I can make videos. But today we are just starting with a simple transfer case seal video. This is the part that was leaking, I believe so. We're gonna check right now. We have to remove the axle and basically this whole assembly right here, we'll try to move it to the side and remove whatever we have to. But I have the gear oil. OEM as always and later on we'll do a drivetrain fluid change for the entire car transmission diff and now we are of course gonna do today the transfer case but this should be a pretty simple process I'll walk you guys through everything we have to do first we do have to start with removing this nut I think it's a 32 I don't remember exactly removing this I'm gonna try to see if I could get away by removing these two bolts out of the strut this one to the tie rod, this axle nut, and try to swing this to the side and see if I can move the axle. If not, I'm gonna have to remove the lower ball joint and take this whole assembly out. Alrighty, so as you guys just saw, I removed the axle with one hand. Like it wasn't clipped in all the way, which is something common that could happen to any of us, to be honest. Uh, now, I don't know if I need to change the seal because I am assuming the reason this was leaking is because these axles have a groove that is supposed to lay on. There's like a snap ring inside the, there's like a, what is it called? It's a long rod that has this little snap ring on it and this axle snaps in and you pull it out and it shouldn't come out unless you really pry it with like a prior or like a slide hammer or something like that. This just came out with my own hands. So honestly, it wasn't probably snapped in correctly all the way in. Let me try to explain this to you guys as simple as pop. Oh, there it is. It pops out all the way. So that ring right there, it's supposed to go in and snap in, but obviously this one didn't. So... I don't know if I should change the seal or not because I don't think the seal was the issue and honestly getting that seal in is a pain in the ass. Let me think, but we got it out so now it's just a matter of us thinking if we should replace the seal or not because it was probably leaking because the axle wasn't all the way in. But let me see. Alrighty, so after giving it thought, I was thinking of just snapping the axle back in and that should honestly solve our leak issue. But I was looking at, look at this one. This is the OEM uh, transfer case output seal that I bought from the dealer. After looking at this one, there's a difference between this one and the one that I'm looking at underneath the car. So if I was to look at this one that's here, you can see that it's kind of like way shorter, the lip 
of it is way shorter. So either they didn't use an OEM seal or they used the one for the tranny, which is a really common issue. The tranny has another seal also just like that, which is that black one there. If they did use a tranny one, that could cause the leak. Again, I doubt it. Maybe it's something aftermarket or I don't know. But this lip is way longer. And I did this seal change on the Gigi Evo and it never leaked. So unfortunately, I'm going to try to change the seal, which is a PETA. But I honestly think I could get away with just snapping the axle back in, snapping it correctly, and it will come out. like, And it won't leak at all, I'm pretty sure. But just for peace of mind, I'm going to change the axle seal again. This is a PETA because sometimes it just doesn't go in straight. You got to, we'll figure it out. But let me remove this Cusco brace, which another PETA. For me to take this Cusco brace because I need to drain the transfer case. It has this bolt right here. And I think I won't be able to take it out because it's going to hit the oil filter. And I am there's no way I'm draining the oil. So we'll figure it out. But first, let me see how we could get in there and try to see how I could press this seal on. Because this is very important, obviously. Mm So, after trying for like 10 minutes of taking this crap off, it was so in there. I got it out, I took a long pry bar, just wanna explain to you guys, just in case. I basically just got a long pry bar, put it here on the side like this, and I pulled out like that. And then it comes out as you can see. Try to be very careful with this bore right here because it needs to be straight. I already put my finger and make sure that there was no scratches or anything. This scratch was already here from whoever did the previous job, but we are good to go. Now we need to install the new axle seal, but I don't have a big enough socket. The biggest I have is 32. So I need to go to AutoZone real quick and get a socket that matches this seal right here or the new one. Alrighty, so this is what we ended up getting at AutoZone, a one and a half socket three-quarter socket this is what i ended up getting just in case any of you guys want to get it it doesn't fit over the entire seal but it does fit perfectly here flush so i could try to drive it in with this i'm gonna see if i could do this with my rubber mallet and just literally tap it in obviously so let me see i don't know if i'm gonna be able to record this i'll try but it should be pretty simple and straightforward I kid you not, this socket was not working for me. It was a little bit too big. I pulled out the boost leak tester I created for the stock turbo and I used the PVC side and it fits perfect to press on. So I'm gonna try it now. Again, it is very hard to record, but if it does work, I'll explain it after, but <laughs> crazy. I've never, ever in my life been so happy to freaking be able to install a seal it's been almost two to three hours i'm not even gonna lie like i stopped recording a long long time ago because i was so frustrated with this seal when you're installing the seal it has to go in straight and if it doesn't go in straight you're gonna bend it you're gonna mess it up so you gotta be very very patient when you're doing this 
and patience got the best out of me. Uh, I stopped, I literally took a break, came back, and I finally got it in. I didn't get it recorded, but I ended up using the same thing that I showed you guys before, which was that little PVC cup that I had. This is the part number if you guys want it. Let me put it, put it straight. I think it's a two and a half PVC. It literally slides right in on top of the tea case. You could use a socket, a bigger socket, obviously, but this is it it's freaking in finally after so long just make sure when you guys do install it that you do leave a little bit of a gap like you don't want this to be flush you don't want this to be flush with your transfer case because if not it will leak you have to leave a little bit of a gap exactly how i did i think it's just me that i'm a perfectionist and i want everything perfect hopefully this doesn't leak because i will freaking cry <laughs> like it took so long to get the seal in but now that i do have it in again all i did was put this cup on top and hammer it in as straight as possible and i didn't want to bend this that's why it probably took me so freaking long <sighs> this was one of those things where it's frustrating because you know this is going to take probably 30 minutes to an hour at most it's such an easy job and these are the jobs that take you the longest literally it always happens to us car people you guys know exactly what i'm talking about this was one that I was like, oh, easy in and out, one hour max, one hour and 30 minutes, and here I am four hours in trying to freaking get this in. But I was gonna tell you guys this. Again, I'm here to show you guys the struggles and the easy stuff. So now that this is in, all we have to do, do is make sure that this axle does snap into that snap ring on that stud right there coming out of the, um, the transfer case. If it does snap, and it doesn't come out easy, then we do have the correct axle. I was kind of scared that maybe this is the wrong axle because obviously it's not OEM. OEM does have like green uh, CB axles, at least that's what I noticed on mine, they were green. So I wanna make sure this is the correct length. So I'm gonna put it in again, make sure that it does snap in. And if it does snap, then this is a job done. I will see if I can put it into gear Obviously, I do still need to drain the tea case, fill it up with OEM gear oil. Once I do fill it up, I'll record that for you guys just so you guys know how to. I might start the car up and put it into gear and see if I see any leaking, but hopefully it does not leak. Please, please, hopefully it doesn't. Now we're actually in business. The axle was able to snap to that snap ring. So now we shouldn't have any leaks. Let me go ahead and put all of this back together. A quick tip for whoever is doing this and doesn't want to mess up their alignment. You can always mark exactly how this was with a Sharpie or a pencil or a pen, whatever you want to do. Because again, this does have a camber bolt on the top. So this will mess up your alignment if you do remove the strut. You can always try to remove it through the ball joint and not move the strut and try to move this assembly to the side exactly as is. That way you don't mess up your alignment. But again, I'm gonna switch everything out of here, suspension, tie rods, all of this. So of course I'm gonna need an alignment. So for me, it doesn't matter, but for you, it might matter. So make sure that you get grit, just grab a pen, 
mark this right here on this knuckle and then when you put it back make sure that you put this camber bolt and make sure that everything lines up to your marks but besides that let me go ahead put this back together one bolt here two bolts here and we should be good to go make sure that i put this through the hub and make sure i torque this nut to spec Alrighty, so like I said before, it is very important to torque all of this. I'll put a link down below where you can get all the torque specs for most of the parts on your Evo. But let's first go ahead and knock this axle nut out of the way. It is going to be torqued at 167 foot pounds. So just please, please make sure you do this. I don't want nothing to happen to any of you guys. And another quick little thing, make sure you guys put in a new cotter pin. Don't reuse the one you use. Harbor Freight sells this for I think like five bucks, four bucks. It works fine. So please put a new cotter pin. There's so many ways you can install a cotter pin, different vari variations and all of that. I know, trust me, I know, but this works fine. If you guys wanna do this one, there's other ways that you could do it, but again, that's fine. And just like that, we are completely done with the transfer case. What a mission to get that seal. Let me explain to you guys how to fill your transfer case just in case. There's several ways to do it. And I know there's a jack trans way to do it, which is through where the shaft goes, but I just filled it through the oil plug. I'll explain the way I do it. I've done it like that on the GG Evo for a while and I haven't had any issues. So let me explain. So first off, I got this little pump from Harbor Freight. I had one, I don't know where it is. So I ended up buying another one. Break the LSD gear oil uh, bottle so you can fit the pump and literally just pump it. Like I don't really have to explain much of this as you guys saw in the video. This is your drain bolt on the T case and then you have your fill, fill bolt. Make sure the car is completely, completely level. You're gonna fill it, the T case takes 0.7 quarts. You're gonna fill it and once you start seeing it drip out, constant fluid, just, I looked at my bottle, I had exactly 0.7 quarts poured in the T case and I put back the fill plug, which is this one up here. Honestly, pretty simple. I did a full video on how to do your entire drivetrain fluid. I'll link it over here on the right side, how to do your transmission, your diff, and all of that. So in case you're wondering, you can see that video. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Honestly, it's one of those days where it's just been annoying to work on the car. Uh, we all have those days, obviously. Nothing always goes the way it should be when we're working on cars. It's part of our hobby. Uh, next video, I'll complete the drivetrain fluid change. I have the tranny that I'm going to do and I'll do the diff as well. And I think next video, honestly, we're ready to take this car for a rip and see if it's not leaking through the T-case, which is my main concern. The whole car was covered with gear oil. That's the reason why I haven't even driven this car. I think I bought this car already more than a month ago and I only drove it to the garage. I've been driving it around the neighborhood here and there. But with all that gear oil splashing around and the T, I was scared that the T case will like just go low and me blow up a T case or something like that. So now that we have the T case with fluid, we'll do the transmission in the next video. We'll do the diff in the next video and we'll probably take it for a rip to see if everything's good. If we don't have no leaks, if we don't have no leaks and everything's good, then, then we have a capable driving JDM Evo 8, which is freaking awesome. Like I can't wait to drive the car and enjoy it. I want to go out like it's the fact that it's right hand drive just makes it so exciting to drive the car, at least for me, I don't know. Anyways, I hope this video was informative. I know I stopped recording a lot while I was doing that seal, but it's kind of self-explanatory. I just hope this helps somebody. I'll see you guys in the next one. Like always, keep grinding and take care. Peace out.